founded on the legacy of the previous Grand MA consoles, the Grand MA 3 represents a radical rethink of what's possible from a lighting control platform. Hello, welcome to this presentation of the Grand MA 3 here at the MA Auditorium at ProLight and Sound 2018. My name is Chris and I'm going to be your host for this session. The Grand MA 3 design um, is specifically around the it's focused around the development of the consoles with user, uh, sorry, user interaction in mind. We have new high-resolution multi-touch screens throughout the console. New letterbox screens at the bottom of the console, giving you a whole new interactivity in the console system. New, mul new motorized faders with LED backlighting on them. New dual encoders across the side of the console. Every console has five dual encoders, giving you 10 functions that you can assign at your fingertips across the whole console system. Even the buttons have been reinvented. New short throw buttons with a silent action but still with a positive click and a new cap design on the top to, design to prevent mispressing, giving you a whole new set of features across the whole console range. Today I'm going to show you around the whole range of the consoles and show you some of the features on this new console system. If you're used to the Grand MA2, you'll know the Grand Grand MA2 light and full size are the main workhorses of the range. Here we have the Grand MA3 full size, and of course there's a light version of this. Both feature the new dual access monitor system on the back here, giving you the ability to fix your monitor wing at any angle you like. To complement this, we now have a, com a control room version of these consoles. We remove the monitor wing and gives you the option to put five external touchscreens on the console and position them anywhere you like, giving you a clear view straight over the back of the console. To expand your consoles, we offer fader wings with the built-in letterbox view on the fader wing as well. Two new consoles in the range, the Compacts. The Compact with a single screen and the Compact XT give you a smaller version of the console, but with the same operation system and the same power of the Grand MA3 larger consoles. Alongside this, we have our network solutions, three new processing units offering different parameter counts. Alongside that, the two port, four port, and eight port nodes offering you DMX distribution solutions. And of course, we still have Grand MA3 on PC and the command wing, which now features motorized faders. Hopefully, you'll see that the Grand MA3 range gives you a full spectrum of consoles for every possible operation and every type of show that you're likely to use it on. Now I'd like to show you a little bit more about the console and how it works and some of the new features on it. If you have a look at the front panel of the console, we have a huge playback area. We have banks, four banks of button executors. Down the bottom, a single row of button executors on its own. Above that, another row of button executors with the motorized faders. Above that, another row of button executors with the new rotary encoders with the push function on them, also backlit with LEDs. Above that, a fourth row of button executors, also with encoders. So we have four banks of button executors, faders, and two rows of encoders. So a huge space for playback options on the, on the console. I'll take you now to one PC and show you a few of the features with this. On the console at the moment, I have a sequence program down here on button 126. And I'll show you what happens if I assign that to different buttons. This screen shows you the flexibility of the system. I can expand across multiple buttons and then move up across the faders and encoders. So I've now set this sequence up to give you 20 buttons, five faders, and 10 encoders just on one sequence. So you've got a huge range you can expand things across to if you want to. Within this, every physical action on the console can be programmed. So when you press a button, when you hold a button down, when you release the button, when you touch a fader, release the fader, when you push the fader up, pull it down, we rotate the encoder in different directions, every function can be mapped to something on the console. So you have complete control and complete flexibility to set up the playback se section in any way you like. If you are familiar with Grand MA2, you'll find transitioning to the Grand MA3 easy. All the syntax is very familiar and much of the system is the same. However, everything has been approved across the board and you'll find lots of new little features everywhere. For example, building a screen. I can now just click and drag to design a screen very quickly and bring it up on there. Things like the fixture sheet, reorganized to make things easier to view and sort out. 
So we now have drop down boxes by fixture types. So we can go in there and we can go into sub fixtures very quickly and easily. Grandma 3 has 3D built into the software. We don't have a separate MA 3D program anymore. So the console has 3D on board or it's in, in the on PC system. You should find most of the views very familiar and you should recognize a lot of stuff from the Grandma 2 system. Operation is very similar, but again with enhancements. If, for example, I grab some fixtures and turn them on, straight away I've used another new feature, the at bar on the command line, a very quick access system so I can grab some of the most commonly used commands without jumping to other windows. I've grabbed some fixtures, I've turned them on, so maybe I'll change the color. You can rotate the encoders on the screen with your finger if you want. Change them to blue. I want to store this as a preset. Click and hold on an empty preset and it stores it for you. The console knows what you want to do. You don't have to jump to other windows to find the store key. One of the great new features on Grandma 3 is the swipey. Take a feature like a preset, put your finger on it and swipe off it. This brings up a new window with a load of functions at your fingertips so you can access them very quickly. So I can store, edit, assign, delete, move, or label it. Labeling has been improved as well. I can, of course, just give it a name. But if I want, I can pick a color, and I can scribble on it. Scribbles can be used all over the console to very quickly label things in whatever way you write, whatever you like. You can write on them. You can draw on them. If you've got positions, you can draw where the positions are. It gives you a new, flexible way of using the console. One major new feature in the Grand MA3 system is the new dynamic effect system called phasers. What phasers are is a new system for creating movements and transitions. Within a phaser, you can create multiple steps. Within each step, you can control the transition from one step to the next. So you control the speed, the curve, and the timing for each step. And then, of course, you can create a whole number of steps and set them up however you want. Think of it like chasers and, and effects kind of combined into one system. I'll give you a quick demonstration. So again, I'll put the fixtures on into a color. And I'll start with that. If you look at the very top of the fixture screen, you'll see up there it says step number one. If I now add a new step and change the color, you'll see it's now phasing between blue and green. So we're starting to do a phaser with two steps. I can just keep adding steps to this. So if I add a third step, we now have three steps in our phaser. We can just keep adding steps and building up until we're ready. When you finish setting it up, you store it as a preset. It's just part of what the fixture is doing as part of the value system. So you can just store it as a preset or as part of a queue if you want to. If you want to play it back, you just run the preset. Now we're running blue, green, orange across these fixtures. So you're sitting there. If you know Granami 2, you're thinking, this is just a chaser. I can do this on Granami 2. It's nice and easy. Well, let's do something a bit different then. We have a whole set of controls for phasers. Absolute and relative will allow you to program relative values into your phaser. So if you're doing something like a movement, you can put the fixtures in a position and do a relative position around that position, just like you can with effect systems. Fade, delay, speed, phase, and repeat all apply to the entire phaser. So if I go into phase, for example, and change that, I can spread the phaser out across the fixtures. So I'm putting 0 through 360 on every fixture. Now we're doing something Grand MA2 can't do. Three colors phasing with 0 through 360 across the lights. Now we're starting to get a bit more interesting and a slightly more interesting effect on here. Have a look at the colors. We can see what it's doing with the new color pick of view. You can see it's running at even speed between every step in the phaser. So now I can start playing around with some more controls. Accelerate and decelerate controls how it goes into and out of every step. This later on will evolve into creating curves and different movements and things like that. So if I change the, the acceleration on step number one, you'll see the behavior changes as it goes through the steps. So you can now see as it goes from orange, there's a different speed as it goes down to the blue. So we've got step one different to all the other steps. If I change to step three, maybe play the transition. So transition and width controls the timing between every step. So I'm now going to change the transition. And again, we can see a different behavior. It goes from blue to green, snaps to orange, holds there, and then moves with its acceleration curve into blue. So we've now got very different behavior between every step. 
is still in its very early stages, and of course it will ev evolve with a lot of systems to help you program these quickly. But hopefully you can see that this is going to have the potential for a very powerful system. I have a few programs on here to demonstrate how this will work. We have some 800 QWOs up in the rig. I change those to blue. I can add a phaser onto those. So we're now phasing between blue and magenta. Add into that a zoom phaser as well. So we're now phasing in and out. I can add in my show buttons from the top here. Give them a tilt. So they're color and tilting at the same time. And another demonstration, we have a three color effect running. So we've got three color phaser running across here. And you can see the timing is different in every single step. So you can program the steps. As you see, they're running there. We've got a very small amount of red, and then it fades from yellow through to magenta and back to a small amount of red again. So hopefully you can see from that, we have a huge power here to create some very advanced systems with this. And uh, as it develops, I think you'll see some really clever stuff coming out of this. The next thing I'd like to talk about is the GrandMA3 fixture file type system. So we're going to jump into the patch and have a look at this. GrandMA3 fixture files are based on the new GDTF uh, format. This is a data system for handling information about moving light fixtures so that moving light manufacturers can provide console manufacturers with lots of information about their fixtures. GrandMA3 fixture type uses this information to really understand how a fixture works. This is the fixture file for this here, it's the Roby Tarantula. And you can see from the list on the screen that you've got all the information about the fixture. The console knows that it has a base, it has a yoke, and it has a head. It knows every component in there. It knows how those components join together. So it knows where all the axes are and where everything bolts onto what. So what part of the fixture is attached to what other part of the fixture. So it really understands how the fixture is constructed. This then leads into the DMX channel system, which of course means the DMX channels controls all the different correct elements of that. The files contain lots of information, multiple revisions of the same file. Even the different DMX modes of the fixture are contained within the file. So when you patch the fixture, you just choose the one fixture type, and you go in and tell it which mode you're going to run it in. So you don't have to change the file because you're just changing the mode of the fixture. This will lead on to how the 3D system handles our fixture files. Because the console understands how the fixture is built, it now understands how to 3D visualize it correctly. So we have an alien pix here from Ayrton, and you can see all the different movements and axes on there are represented correctly on 3D. 3D knows exactly what to do with it, so it looks correct on the 3D system, and you, all ha and you have all the correct controls on the console, and it becomes very easy to operate. So when you get complex and unusual fixtures, the console knows all about them. The next feature I'd like to show you is the color themes. You can create your own color theme for the console system, so you can decide how the console looks. Built in, as well as the default color scheme, is a daylight color scheme, so you can change it to daylight mode and work it under bright lighting. So even with a very bright light on this, we tried it the other day with a 20K light, you could see everything very clearly. And of course, it's MA, that means you can design your own color schemes, so you can go in here and change all the colors to have whatever color scheme you want. We offer a remote solution as well. The remote solution, like GrandMA2, is working on a web-based system. The difference to this is when a web browser goes into GrandMA3, you get one extra screen from the console. This means that every function of the GrandMA3 can be brought up onto the screen and controlled by the remote. This means you've got a huge range of possibilities, lots of different choices. You can pretty much do everything the console can do from the remote. Think about maybe if you had a tablet, you just grab it out, connect it to the console, you've got an extra screen straight away, then you can walk off with it, and you can do all sorts of things to the console. So huge amount of power there from the remote. The next feature I'd like to show you is data pools. Data pools store into them all of your sequences and pages, your groups, and your presets. The difference between GrandMA 2 and 3 is that GrandMA 2 had one data pool. GrandMA 3 has multiple data pools. So we can now jump around between data pools and actually jump very quickly between a different set of sequences, groups, and presets. So I've got an example here, multi-user programming, maybe with a main act and a couple of support acts, and maybe a system operator, all have different setups of the console. I mean, you can jump very, very quickly between different setups, but all still be in the same show file without having to log out or change anything or do anything too different. I mentioned on PC earlier. Well, we now do it on a Mac. Finally. So the Mac on PC, 
um, is fully working, will connect to a command wing, and allow you to program offline. It will also connect to a console and go into session. Unfortunately, it would not allow you to control parameters on your own. You have to be connected to a console to do that. We can't generate parameters from a Mac. But you can fully program offline, so you can grab your command, command wing, sit at home, and quite happily program with Grandome 3 on a Mac. We also offer Mode 2 version on the light and full-size versions of the Grand Domain 3. So if you're going to be buying a console anytime soon and you're not quite ready to move on to the Grand Domain 3 platform, Mode 2 offers you full capability of the Grand Domain 2 console on the Grand Domain 3 hardware. As you can see, it's fully integrated. There's a working console behind you. It even uses the letterbox screens. So in many ways, it's actually nicer on the Grand Domain 3 hardware. So if you get a chance to have a play with that later on, go and have a look. It's really quite cool. So this is bringing me to the end of my demonstration, but I want to leave you with a few features of the console just to show you some of the really cool things that are coming up on Grand Domain 3. You might have noticed when I programmed my phaser earlier on that the fixtures were running in order across the rig. This is due to this new system called the selection window. The selection window stores in its positions of the lights on a 2D grid. So the moment when you select fixtures, they just go in a straight line. You press next and previous, it goes through them one by one. If I bring up a different group, it's now got positions for the fixtures based on where they are actually in the physical rig. If I now turn highlight on and go through them one by one, you'll see it pairs them up by columns. So when I'm using next and previous, it goes across each column on the selection window, allowing you to work your way through your fixtures. Alongside this, I'm using highlight right now. We have a new feature, the highlight master. You can use this to vary the level of highlight while you're actually operating. So we can go and bring the highlight master down. And we also have a solo master as well. So another new feature there you can play around with. The last thing I want to show you is to do with timing. If you're familiar with Grand Domain 2, you'll know that you can do things like you can put a timing time delay across fixtures. So when you run the queue, the lights change color one by one. Well, you can store that into a preset. But now with Grand Domain 3, when you recall that, oops, turn, just turn highlight off again. When you recall the preset with a delay time, the preset plays back with the delay time. So a lot of people are saying, why can you do that? We can now. But once you've done that, you can store that onto an executor. Once it's stored on an executor, you can then play it back with a temp fader, and it will play back with the delay times on the fader. We call it a catwalk fader. If you watch the show buttons at the top, you see we've got that directly connected to a fader, a feature I know a lot of you have been asking for for quite some time. So there we go. That's my brief introduction to Grand Domain 3 for you. What I'd like you to do, do now is I'd like you to go to the stations behind the auditorium, go and have a play with the console for yourself. Try out the new buttons and faders, get a feel for how the console works. Um, there's a lot of, uh, lot of experts there waiting to take your questions, so please feel free to go and ask them and have a play with the console for yourself. Hope you enjoy the rest of your day at ProLight and Sound. Thank you very much.